Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a very stormy pattern setting up for next week with severe weather and flooding rains. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, here is the latest uh, satellite picture for this morning of May the 12th. And we had all that active weather to come through Texas uh, yesterday. And then it was very storming over uh, New Orleans overnight. They even had a possible tornado in the middle of the night. Uh, the National Weather Service will be doing their investigations. But that trough is now digging all the way down to the south. And that's going to be setting the stage for more showers and thunderstorms right down in the deep south along here in the Florida Panhandle as this uh, cooler temperatures will continue uh, to funnel down into the south and the southeast. So let me take you through the water vapor imagery. This is going to be the setup for tomorrow. So that first system will finally move off the coast of uh, Florida. That'll be bringing some rain showers to them, but much of the south and southeast that got just inundated with rain and storms will be starting to dry out. And we'll be setting up uh, another stormy pattern after we have uh, several days of a kind of a, a drying out period as we kind of look towards uh, out here in the west coast for our next uh, particular setup. So as we go through Saturday going into Sunday, so here's the latest uh, water vapor imagery. We're going to find a developing diving trough that's going to be diving off the coast of uh, uh, Alaska here, setting up over uh, California. That's going to have a lot of lift with this southwest flow again. And that's going to create a very stormy setup that's going to be taking shape for much of next week. So already by Saturday night, getting into the overnight on Saturday night going into Sunday, we could see some storms starting to flare up again over Texas and much of the midsection of the country through the plains with some very stormy weather and wet weather, which shaping up of, to be a very wet week ahead. If we kind of fast forward all the way to Wednesday, this same setup continues to pummel the same areas into Texas, into Louisiana, much of Oklahoma, Arkansas, getting through the plains with a very stormy uh, setup going through midweek. And that will just continue uh, into Friday. So that just kind of gives you an overview of what I'm kind of expecting uh, for predominantly uh, next week. So let's kind of take you back and where we are now. So we had the very cold air. I know a lot of you guys are pretty much over the cold for May, but this setup was uh, compliments to that uh, polar vortex warming. It was a lot of the same setup that with, with that Arctic outbreak back in February, there's kind of a lot of the same dynamics that took place then is kind of repeating itself again, but it is May, it's not February. And so a lot of these areas that were cold back then during that Arctic outbreak are going to be cold and have been cold uh, now. And so I think that will continue uh, for the foreseeable future, especially with this wet stormy pattern that I expect uh, for much of next week. But yeah, these well below average anomalies will be modifying, but today they're locked into, into much of the south and the southeast. You're going into places like say Gibbs in Georgia, you know, just southwest of Augusta here, you're talking like 66 degrees uh, later on this afternoon with some showers around. That is well below normal, even into, even into Raleigh, North Carolina here with these anomalies, 20, 25 below average, you're talking like 55 degrees for a high temperature. So many record high low temperatures will be set uh, for much of the south and southeast you know, going on today, and then we start to somewhat trying to modify next uh, tomorrow, we do dry out in these periods. And that's why we do warm up a little bit because we're going to have a lot less clouds. But still a lot of the same areas, you know, Gibson again, you know, 65 degrees, that's well below average with these cooler temperatures sinking all the way down into Georgia, into the Carolinas, all the way into Texas. This ridge continues to be amped over, uh, you know, California into the West Coast, and much of Canada remains above average. So let me take you through the culprit of what I think is going to play out for next week and even the week after that. So here is the latest uh, Manage Julia Oscillation. Here's the MJO. It's been predominantly in phase two and phase three. That's why it's been really active down in the southern regions but also chilly. That is a very cold phase in phase two and phase three. If you look at the setup here, 
it actually was going to go back into four and we're starting to get a warm up again. I don't think that's going to happen. It's actually going to make a loop and circle back. You can see the flare up over the Indian Ocean, which matches over here out here. You can see the storm out over the Indian Ocean. What this basically does is this amps this uh, ridge over Alaska feeds this ridge here. And this basically has a, a very active southern jet. That's the culprit of that you know, first initial storm that already formed out here in the Pacific. So all this is going to line up being over this very active phase of two and three just over the next week. So as this storm develops, this will amplify this uh, ridge over the Gulf of Alaska, diving down these troughs. This will, this will be connecting to the southern branch here, and that'll help feed, feeding off those warm Gulf temperatures. Funnel effect, feeding in the moisture for the deep south, much of the plains, much of the Corn Belt, and much of the southeast for the foreseeable future into next week the, with a very stormy setup and there's even uh, applying that models are showing at yet another storm forming you know in a week now into the indian ocean which keeps this same stormy stormy pattern alive even beyond that so i expect a very stormy uh, rainy setup for much of the south southeast into the plains into the corn belt over the next week or two. So here is uh, the latest setup for as we go into Sunday. So we, we are gonna be modifying, we are gonna be drying out after today, uh, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but it, the, the systems gets really start to ramp up again as we go into Sunday, as these, as these ridges come down here, uh, these troughs come down here off the Gulf of Alaska, this meets up with this southern branch here, and that sets the stage for showers and thunderstorms over much of Texas, over much of Oklahoma, and to Kansas, and to the plains here. So I'm expecting some severe weather starting to take place again by Sunday, and then even out here in the plains as well with a very stormy uh, and wet time ahead. You can see where the, the latest guidance of where the storms potentially might be as we get into Sunday, Predominantly getting in back into Texas, getting back into uh, portions of the plains again, uh, going into Sunday. So as we go into Monday, not of the same setup. I still think this feed continues to pummel into Monday with some very wet conditions over much of the south. Going to the Corn Belt, we're pretty much dry still out here and in, into the southeast. Uh, but man, these these troughs continue to pump down uh, throughout the week as we go into Monday. There's your Monday setup for portions or possibly severe weather for much of Texas, much of Oklahoma, much of Kansas. We could be looking at some stormy conditions uh, for Monday as we go into Tuesday. Kind of the same thing. A lot of these same areas continue to pump with that same setup that's going to be relentless all week with that circle back in the MJO that's not going to be moving these systems very fast at all it's going to be a lot less progressive and it's going to be just more of a continuous flow and it could be setting up flooding concerns by then by the time we get into Tuesday with these just relentless amount of rains that I'm expecting for much of the central part of the U.S. And then it'll eventually funnel into portions of the southeast as we go uh, into Tuesday. There's your storm storm by the time we get into the 18th of the month. Yeah, a lot of these same areas could see some active uh, severe weather uh, in, in place with those very heavy rains. As we go into Wednesday, kind of the same setup. I mean, this I continue, I, I see a very stormy week ahead as we go into Wednesday. This could be just a relentless amount of, of precipitation going over a lot of the same areas uh, you know, throughout the week. And there's your stormy setup again as we go through Texas, as we go through Kansas, Oklahoma, get into uh, Arkansas. It's probably gonna feed more in the Corn Belt now, getting into much of uh, Kentucky, going into, uh, you know, Virginia as this very active system that I think is going to come across for much of next week. There is your Thursday look that just continues uh, to go into the, you know, even from a week from now, I do, do feel this is going to be a very stormy setup all week long. You can see a lot of the same areas pummeling through for much of the central U.S. with these troughs continuing to dive down off the Gulf of Alaska taking advantage of that very active MJO. We've got a little storm system out here that's going to be bracing off into the off uh, the coast of the Northeast. 
uh, there's your there's your severe look by the time we get into the 20th of the month and still be under the gun with some stormy stormy period for much of uh, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, much of the south. We go into that that 19th, that 20th of the month, looking at where we are on, on Friday by the 21st. Again, that same area is into Texas and to Louisiana for much of the Corn Belt and the Ohio Valley and the Plains. I'm expecting some very heavy rain. This will eventually feed into uh, Florida, and this will just continue into Saturday. So with some more storms and more wet weather for portions of Texas, it tries to move on a little bit as we go deeper into uh, next weekend by the 22nd. But you can definitely see where this active stormy period is going to be. Here's your... Uh, anomalies for the next 10 days so i do feel a lot of the same areas that are more or less chilly now are going to remain cold for the next seven to ten days on average so this is your high and low mean temperature you're talking three to five degrees below average over the next 10 days so a lot of the areas out west will be above average with that ridge where you're going to be dry you're going to be a lot warmer up here in Canada. And a lot of this, they're gonna be inundated with your clouds and showers. It's gonna be very difficult uh, to, to heat up in this in these areas with all the clouds and rain that I think is gonna be over this these areas over the next uh, 10 days. And if we look at the some of the anomalies, just on the latest uh, GFS, now granted, these, this is May. This is, you're talking of already, it's already historically your wettest month of the season for much of the south here in the plains and when you're get starting to look at, at some of these anomalies that are going to be you know three to four times what your normal rainfall rate could be that is a serious concern for some very heavy rain and will be flooding conditions for much of texas much of oklahoma much of arkansas much of the plains probably coming up for the the next uh, 10 days you look at the latest European model, kind of applies the same thing. Some of these anomalies are showing three to four times normal rainfall rate for much of Texas. I just think Texas gets pummeled with some very heavy rain. Much of the plains here don't going through the Ohio Valley, and there'll be a southern branch too with some little bit higher anomalies too into portions of uh, Alabama uh, going into Georgia. Here's the latest uh, GFS, uh, just the 10 day rainfall over the next uh, 10 days. And yeah, this is this is some serious stuff, guys. I mean, you can see out west, it's pretty much remains dry. This is over 10 days in portions like, say, Portland, maybe a quarter inch. That's nothing. That's not much rainfall at all. But as you get into central part of the U.S., I mean, some of these digits could be double digits, 10 inches of rain. Places like New Orleans has already see, received 40 inches of rain since january 1st and they've got a lot more to come so this is definitely a concern going forward not just the severe weather but also the flooding rains that are going to be pummeled in this area you don't need your sprinklers in this area at all because there's going to be a plenty of moisture around for much of texas much of oklahoma much into arkansas much of kansas get into missouri but possibly even Illinois. A lot of these areas easily could pick up six to 10 inches of rainfall just over the next 10 days with no, no, no question at all. So, hey, I uh, hope this, uh, hope this, uh, you, you gained a lot of value in this video and I hope you kind of understand, you know, what this is going to be taking place over the next, uh, you know, say seven to 10 days. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update, Wire Protect You before and after the storm.